you will be familiar with the basics of making tube from how we created pipe, but there are a few key differences to take into consideration. We will start by manually creating a tube route by adding the starting and ending points to fittings that I've already put into this block. We're going to work on connecting this top fitting to this bottom fitting. So let's zoom in on this point up here, the connection point for this top fitting. Then I'll right click on that and go down to start route again, just like we did with piping. Now you'll see over here that the route properties has popped up, but this time there's a few different options to pick from. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that it automatically puts tube here instead of pipe because the software knows that you're performing a tube route into a tube fitting that it has pre-programmed into the design library pieces. Now you can come down to the base configuration and select what outer diameter and what wall thickness you'd like on your tube. I'm gonna stick with the default one, which is the 0.25 inches and the 0.028 inch wall. Now you'll see that it automatically inputs your wall thickness here based on this. And then I'm gonna now select use flexible hoses. So this is crucial to be able to make these nice bends in our tube and hose, just like I did on this one over here on the right side of our block. So now I'm gonna zoom back in. And now instead of some of the same elbow selections that we had from our piping, instead we have the option to choose a bend radius. Now this is important because the software is going to check as you make your route to make sure that you're not exceeding your bend radius. If you create anything that's too small, it will err and let you know, which is very useful to make sure you don't make any routes that are not actually capable of being created in the real world. Now, you can also add coverings like tape and rope here, just like you were with pipe. So if you click this, you can see some of your options up here, most likely be using something like adhesive tape, and you can click your drop down to see your options, and obviously create a custom covering just like we did before. If you want to see a few more details about that, check back in the piping section to look at our covering video there. I'm not going to add any coverings onto this tube, so I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Now I'm going to keep all the rest of my options as is and go ahead and click on OK. And now you'll see a stub length has been created here coming out of the end of this fitting. Now let's go down to the bottom and go ahead and add to our route our ending point in this other fitting. So now I'm going to zoom back out so I can have both of them in view because we're going to manually sketch a spline between these two points to represent our tube. So I'm going to come up to the top left of my screen and select spline. Now you're going to do this instead of lines because you want these nice curving shapes in your tube, not the sharp corners like you would in pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and click this point up here to start. And you'll notice I immediately get these red arrows pop up, which are indicating to me which plane I'm on. In this case, I'm on the XY plane, which is exactly what I want to be able to connect down here to this point. However, if you wanted to be drawing in a different direction, just like we did with the other 3D sketches, just hit tab and you can immediately be sketching on different planes and rotate to whatever you need for wherever you want your tube to go. But I'm gonna stay on the XY plane for now. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking to create my spline. So I'm going to create a nice, big arc coming out. And every time I click, I'm adding a new spline point to this tube route. So then I'm going to click at the end, and you'll see I've created my tube. So after that, go ahead and click on Exit Sketch, Exit of Assembly, and you can see my tube has been created. Now don't worry about this overlap here. This can easily be edited, and I'll go over how to edit some of your tube in one of our later videos. Now, just so we can compare, I'm going to actually click on the route I just made. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hit delete. I'm gonna confirm delete, yes. Because now I'm gonna show you how to do the exact same route with auto routing. So let's start by doing the same thing, going and right clicking on that connection point, selecting start route, saving all of my parts. And I'm going to, again, click Use Flexible Hoses, and then maintain all of my other settings the same. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Go down to the bottom again to add this other point to my route. And after that loads, instead of creating a spline between these two points, we're going to let auto routing generate it for us. So I'm going to right click on our first point and select Auto Route. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom and click the last one as well. And you'll see immediately we have a path that pops up 
that is within our bend radius requirements. And all I have to do now is click the green check mark, exit out of my sketch, exit out of the assembly, and there you go. You now have a tube that was created using auto routing, but you see you could also create a very similar shape using a spline that you created yourself. So now that our first basic tube route has been created, let's now look at how we can move around and edit some of these routes to make adjusting easier.